Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is John V. I'm actually pretty excited to be here and take you all through my experiences of building analytics products, both for business intelligence users as well as um, cloud monitoring applications. So without much further ado, let's jump into my presentation. So I, um, I'm a product manager at Palo Alto Networks at the moment, and I um, uh, build the autonomous digital experience management product along with the cloud monitoring uh, product for Prisma Access. And typically this is to help um, ID admins and users figure out um, you know, issues in their cloud monitoring, um, in, in the cloud infrastructure, um, looking for specific issues around application, user experience, as well as auto remediation and things like that. Um, a little bit about me would be, um, I uh, so I've been a product manager for quite some time now. I started at, I actually started as a developer, software engineer at SAP, um, and worked for the CRM product, built the build, building engine with CRM. And um, right after that, I uh, joined Salesforce as a solution engineer, worked on the pre-sales organization and um, you know um, worked pretty closely with customers figuring out their niche use cases and product fits and um, demos etc which was a great learning experience for me because um, I was so close to the customers and understanding their wants and needs uh, made me uh, ma made me think about how that could influence the product. And which is where um, I pivoted to a product manager role internally within Salesforce. And I moved to um, Einstein Analytics at that time, which is now Tableau CRM. And I worked as a product manager on the analytics templates product, which typically helps uh, business intelligence users build their sales analytics, service analytics, market analytics, all of that um, quickly, uh, right from the templates that are available out of the box, ensuring fast time to value, also um, ensuring that they can follow some of the best practices that we put together um, after you know numerous customer sessions, etc. So that was a that was what I did at Tableau. Um, and currently I am a senior product manager at Palo Alto Networks. Um, and I work on the product um, autonomous digital uh, experience management. So a little bit of learnings uh, on the way have been predominantly around building analytic applications. And my also my major in college was data analytics and data science. So I feel it was a natural progression for me to, um, you know, to, to start to uh, work on products that facilitate other fellow, uh, uh, fellow learners such as myself in data analytics and data uh, science fields. So uh, I, as you can see, I have a, vid, a, you know, a varied experience all the way from software engineer to pre-sales to product manager. So I think I, um, that definitely helped build my skill set over time and definitely helped me view uh, a product in multiple ways to kind of assess how the users are using it, how the sales is pitching it, how the builders are building it. So it was a very unique perspective that I developed by um, across this varied experience I had. Um, so I want to take you through a little bit of my learnings from the previous two products that I have worked. So at Salesforce, I pretty much worked on a business intelligence tool. So the kind of users that that I focused um, as uh, while building the business intelligence and analytic platform was predominantly sales, service, and marketing users. Now, these are some users that want um, to generate dashboards and generate reports in a timely manner. They want to get drive insights out of the data available quickly, and they want to stay informed about metrics that move the needle for them that they care about. And they'd want it in uh, a place where they do their everyday business. Um, so which is where contextual analytics becomes really important. Um, so that was something that sales, service, and marketing users cared about. Now, 
there's still a team that utilizes the analytics platform to build these dashboards and reports for the said end users. And that's, uh, that's the uh, large organization of business analysts, data analysts, and data science. So for them, what they cared about was, uh, you know, predominantly the tools that's required to develop these dashboards and reports quickly, enable um, ad hoc analysis. So if there's any questions that they were encountered with or they needed to provide answers, um, we, we should provide a toolkit for them that makes ad hoc analysis relatively simple and easy to build. Um, and they also have to deal with a large variety of data sets, the data sources being disparate. They, you know, they had to bring data from multiple sources, uh, prep the data before that was visualized. So we had to ensure that the analytics platform also uh, provided an ease of use and data management and prep tools that enabled business analysts and data analysts and like typically dashboard builders um, to quickly get their um, get the dashboards and reports out or quickly get their uh, you know uh, get up to speed with some of the dashboards that they needed to build. They also cared about the fact that the platform needed to be, or the product needed to be fully customizable and extensible. Fully customizable because um, oftentimes the dashboards out of the box may not suffice all the requirements. And typically they also tend to, uh, you know, use data sets that, that are outside of a single, uh, outside of a single product or platform to build that holistic 360 degree view for their end users, um, which is where the extensibility of the platform was very important. Also customizability, right? And um, you know, um, I, for some reasons that they, for some users that they catered to, um, one half of the view was very important versus the other. For that, we needed to build a fully customizable um, uh, platform that lets users uh, choose a variety of visualizations to present their data in a variety of filtration mechanisms as well as publishing mechanisms. So all of this needed to be catered to um, with the analytics platform. And finally, there's another group of users who mainly work on generating these predictive insights for their end users. And they typically cared about AI ML capabilities and running the model and hypothesis testing and figuring out um, if that model is working well, um, how the accurate their predictions are, et cetera. So that's another tool, um, a plethora of features that we had to uh, build within the analytics platform for that specifically cater to data scientists. Um, right from Salesforce to the, the product that I own and build right now is the cloud infrastructure monitoring and analytics platform. And typically the users here are network and security admins, IT admins, and um, you know, the SRE group. They typically care about fires and how to fight them. So they want to understand or they want to be notified about change of events or um, any incidents that occur right there. And um, they typically also look forward uh, for, look, look to, um, they typically also look to identifying the root causes of those events and incidents, if the, which one needed to be solved, right? So, um, which makes monitoring issues in real time and real time aspect of the platform really, really important for these users. Um, anomaly detection, catching all of these issues early on in time to prevent um, or at least mitigate the impact is very important to the users, um, to the current users, as well as in a lot of situations where it comes to infrastructure and network, um, it, it, things are tied very closely to the amount of bandwidth they could use, amount of licenses that are distributed across an org. So um, based on their usage, it's very important for them to predict what kind of capacity that will be required going forward. So that, that, that's where the capacity as planning aspect becomes really important. Um, to ensure this, you know, you want to make sure that you're catching telemetry, building this rich repository of data with logs and metrics and telemetry across different vantage points within the infrastructure. 
bringing them together, correlating some of these uh, metrics and incidents to provide an easily consumable insight for your end users, making their analysis relatively simple and giving them more time to respond and remediate these problems rather than um, you know, having them spend time on assessing the root cause, assessing the issues and going back a historical trail and figuring out what's happened. Um, sometimes that is definitely important where you're figuring out where they do want to figure out the ret in retrospective the incidents and um, events through historical analysis, but oftentimes it is very proactive. So the real time and the predictive nature of a platform becomes very, very important in such a scenario. So there's a couple of points or a couple of themes that were um, similar across the analytics products that not only have I built, but also studied, um, you know, um, studied while, uh, building out the competitive analysis uh, viewpoints, etc. So across all of these uh, products, there's some themes and th those predominantly focus on um, the first one being they focus on unlocking insights that drive actionability and decision making. Um, we want a rich um, feature set that enables visual storytelling, either uh, through a do-it-yourself mechanism or build that within the analytics you're building itself. The visual storytelling is um, very important when it comes to consumption of these analytics themselves. Um, for a, an analysis to be complete, um, ideally we need them to be descriptive, diagnostic descriptive, and predictive. Um, I'll take us through what each of these mean and how they played out in the success of my, the previous products um, in, the, in the upcoming slides, but uh, I wanted to call them out quickly here. Um, it's also important for users not just to deliver dashboards and reports, right? They need these insights uh, where they can view them. Um, they need to see these automated insights where they can actually take action and where, um, you know, in a timely manner that they can act quickly on. So that's insights where they're, um, you know, providing insights where they are actually needed for the end users. Then comes extensibility, uh, which is APIs and customizations, and uh, you know, furthermore is automated insights. So let's talk a little bit about the actionable insights. Um, it's the whole agenda of building a, an, a you know analytics dashboard report is to answer a few questions. Um, typically users tend to work backwards where they identify the questions that need to be answered. They understand the metrics that um, the person, the, the end user that they're building it for, end user that's consuming these analytics are very, um, you know, they, uh, they, they care about these metrics. Uh, so to that end, we need to focus on a design that makes correlation of these metrics easy. Um, and we ensure that the design also accounts for this. Eventually, as an outcome of the, the analysis or you know, the, uh, the outcome of the deep dive in data that the end user does is to take action, to make smarter decisions. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, uh, customers who appreciate the product actually love that um, you can embed the actionability. You do an analysis, work through a flow, and finally end that in an action that influences some a better outcome for the end users. So to that point, embedding actions within these visualizations is really, really important to ensure that the analysis they have done uh, leads to actions. So if there were um, cornerstones of design or, or pillars that you guiding principles to build these analytic solutions, driving actionability or providing actionable insights that drive a better outcome is the number one guiding principle that um, you know uh, you need to follow while building the analytic products or providing if you are building the analytics within the product integrated within the product make sure that there is provision for it or if you are building a platform itself make sure that there are there's a toolkit that's available uh, uh, that enables users to embed this actionability within their uh, uh, within their analytics platform, within their dashboards, actually. Um, the next important that I've uh, noticed in um, like building a successful analytics platform or a product is visual storytelling. 
So it's not just important that you combine graphs, plots, and tables in a single view, but it's also important to focus on the design elements um, to add a compelling narrative to the analytics that's built. Oftentimes, you, we notice that analytics is not just uh, for consumption, but it's also to uh, present to a larger group of audience and some of the findings, um, which is when uh, it, visual storytelling becomes really powerful and really strong. You're able to drive your point through a narrative that you have formed out of the dashboard that um, you, know, you, you could build um, on, uh, through your product. Um, when you walk through uh, a story of a user trying to perform a specific an uh, analysis, make sure your design validates that story. So that way you're able to uh, present a story accurately. For instance, um, um, for instance, if you are trying to help a sales leader identify where their quarter will land, make sure that you start from uh, the metrics that are important, uh, where they are today, the reasons for that and what can be improved. This, now this design makes for a strong narrative and also engages the audience when you're, when you're uh, presenting your insights. Um, also, when you're building the, the platform, um, make sure you provide the necessary toolkit, such as a library of visualizations, recommendations if possible, um, some standard design patterns that make building this visually appealing, beautiful dashboards and reports easy. Um, make it easy for users to navigate between the different widgets, um, correlating these different widgets or placing these different widgets that make sense that need to be integrated together in a single view. And also provide a wide variety of toolkits that is necessary for drilling, slicing and dicing the data as we um, popularly refer to this as. Um, so that way you can, that way you're, you're equipping your end users with the right set of features to build a visually compelling dashboard and report. Let's talk about complete analytics now. Um, so um, in both the products that I've worked on, the business intelligence and uh, um, the digital experience management product, I have noticed that you build analytics, analytics come a complete circle when you are addressing uh, what is happening. So this is the first level of uh, analysis that most end users would do, which is descriptive, right? Like what is the, the exploratory data analysis, the, the pretty basic ones of, of what is happening. And uh, um, you help your end users see and interpret this data. Uh, you have a draw data set and you're just trying to build some roll up aggregate and uh, measures uh, and metrics and trying to compute the percentages to see what has changed over time. And this is, this is rather descriptive. This is the basic, um, uh, you know, the basic uh, element of analytics. Um, you st further strengthen that with the diagnostic analytics. That is when you're figuring out, um, I'm seeing my data, but why is that happening, right? Like why, what is the cause? Um, and can I see a pattern within that? So that's, that's, um, that's the next step of uh, understanding of, of presenting the analytics. Um, you also want to understand, given, you know, given the general uh, richness of data that you have, can you leverage some of the uh, uh, AIML capabilities to understand what could happen? Um, you know, how uh, you, you want to ensure that there is also uh, the outcome that you predict also has some um, level of accuracy. So that way your end users are looking at what's happening, why is that happening, and what could happen, right? So, um, and based on that, you need to finally give um, a list of uh, recommendations or a list of steps or actions that the user could take, uh, which is the prescriptive part of the analytics. Now, providing these four um, elements makes for a complete analysis. Um, for instance, if you're looking at um, the revenue numbers of an organization, you want to look at where my revenue is standing, um, why is my revenue the way it is? So what are the deals that are contributing to it, et cetera? Um, if, can I hit my goal this quarter or not? Um, and finally, if I am not able to hit my goals, what should I do to ensure that I can hit my goals? This is an example of uh, one of the previous uh, um, you know, uh, workflows that 
I designed and uh, it it was really validated by end users uh, on the importance of this analytics. So, and you should also keep in mind to provide insights where they are needed. Um, oftentimes your end users perhaps care about one or two metrics, which are very important for them, which they want to be notified about all the time. So to provide that, there's two mechanisms that you could use. One is contextual analytics. That is you embed your analytics into your solutions. So for instance, if you have the end user, um, you know, taking a bunch of actions on your opportunity items or your records, you want to ensure that you're embedding the analytics right where, where they can um, also you know, uh, back up there, you know, perform some sort of an analysis um, and then take right action right there. So you're providing them a holistic view of the problem with the data to back up and also um, and equipping them with the necessary uh, uh, mechanisms that they can act on. Um, when it comes to notification and alerts, it becomes very important, uh, especially in situations where um, you have to fight fires constantly, that you be notified proactively about issues that might cause some sort of a service disruption, or um, if you're not hitting your goal, these are the metrics that users want to be notified about. So either you build that in the product, you build a notification and alerting system where you can notify users of events and metrics as soon as they happen right within the product or equip your users to build them uh, themselves, some sort of a customization capability or building a developer toolkit, if you, if, uh, if you may, to provide these alerts and notifications to their end users. This enables end users decide, and also you by this way, you're also enabling your end users to decide which metrics and changes they really care about and um, use their own discretion to build notification and alerts around them. Um, it's not just, it's, it's, it's one step to provide these notifications and alerts and also another step to make consumption of them easy. So, it, you know, you, you often, what's, what, uh, what was proved in the past in my own experience was to make the consumption mechanism really, really easy and reliable. Um, use popularly used tools such as Slack, email messages to get these notifications upfront uh, to customers. So they're aware of the data changes or events as and when they occur in a place that's very um, easy for them to access. And last but not the least, um, the extensibility of a platform becomes very important when there's disparate data sources. Um, so when you want to build a large scale data analysis tool, you it never it off, never happens in isolation. You off, uh, users tend to ingest data from many sources to build that 360 degree view. So that capability to export data from additional sources or um, I mean, sorry, import data from additional sources or leverage the APIs and connectors to get data from third-party systems, analyze them in your own platform or make the, the, or build a rich set of APIs that users can consume to get the data out of your system becomes very important and uh, really necessary for end users. Um, and follow that out by customization users always require the ability to make customizations to the dashboard you presented. For instance, um, oftentimes the time um, of time of the analysis that you're performing becomes important. So you need to be able to provide the customizations of uh, that they're looking for. Or um, you know, if the end user feels like a visualization could be rep better represented in a different form, um, that is something you could offer up as a customization technique. Um, if there's any specific changes to the underlying query that the user wants to do, that's another customization. So cust a rich set of customization uh, rich set of publishing methods that you could um, extend to your end users will definitely move the needle in terms of adoption and engagement. That's some of the insights that I uh, gathered, uh, I learned during my time um, as a product manager for analytics products. And it's an ongoing journey. Um, you know, I, I learn about it every day. Um, I hope the webinar was uh, useful for um, the audiences who were, uh, who've um, 
attended and uh, feel free to leave me in, any comments or questions. I'm happy to answer that offline. I hope you had as much fun uh, listening to this as I had presenting it. Um, thank you. <laughs>